What a blast to see this film, you guys. And the thing that came through, I think, most of all was the camaraderie that the four of you guys had. Was right. that something that happened right. right away or something that developed? It did. Uh, early on, we had, we had very intense gum training. And uh, Bradley said earlier, and it's, it's very true, when, you, when, you, when you're all vulnerable together, you, kinda, you bond, you know? And it, it started in the early days, last August. I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that when we got in front of the camera, we were all it was cool easy, with each easy, other. yeah. Right. What did you expect from uh, Charlton? I'm sure you saw him in District Nine. Did yeah. you know him personally before no, that? Just I, from I, District no, but I was a huge fan of District Nine, yeah. and uh, and actually, um, he he tested for the sh for the movie and uh, with all of us. And, uh, and that, that, that was, I was just hoping that, that, that he was going to do it, because in my mind there was absolutely nobody who could play it as good as he could. I, d I improved all my lines in District 9, so I come in like, you know, I'm going to be like, hey, I'm going to be the guy, you know, I'm going to be the improv guy. <laughs> this guy starts going off, I mean, he's so fast, so <laughs> quick, with so much of the best stuff in the movie that he does is like, is, is, is improv. And I think what, 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 he, what Quentin brought as well, which I love as a fan, is like he brought the essence of Mr. T in the, in the role of the, the protector and the tough guy and the fighter. But it's just a little bit more, and you know, I use this very carefully, like, like people were talking about, or well, let's rather say like the comedic kind of element of the original show. Yeah. It's, it's still there, but he brings heart to it and he brings mm -hmm. depth and a kind of warmth and a charisma to his version of, of, of B.A., which I love as a, as a fan. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm, just, I'm happy he said that about it, but I, I have to say that out of all the characters, Shouto was the, the, the one who won me over the most, even though I was in the movie, because he was the most like his character. See, I didn't have gold chain. I didn't have everything like, like Mr. T had and stuff like that. And I feel like Shouto stayed the truest to his character from the TV, from the TV series. And, I'm so thrilled with that. I remember kind of iconic images of the show. I remember Mr. T. I remember Chains. I remember the cigar, <laughs> the van. But I never really knew of any of the other characters. I wasn't familiar with them at all. Did you rent the DVDs and watch them? Did I didn't. You didn't familiarize yourself at all with it? I didn't because I sort of feel like I, I didn't want to be bogged down by what was already there. Talk about that. Uh, development of the character who is such a position of authority mm -hmm. as a female. Were you pretty proud to take on that challenge? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, because it's very rare to find female characters that kind of kind of carry that much weight and that you can really believe in, in, a, in an experience like this, in a journey like this. The thing that I learned most of all is that there are so many female operators, and I mean, I mean like undercover operators, than you would ever think. They are, uh, they, they can move through places easier. People trust women more. It's this weird psychological thing that our, our actual military advisor who was teaching us and who was also our weapons trainer, um, he would talk to me all the time about how key the women on his team are. And you would never think that. You would think, oh, this is a guy's job and women don't want to do this, but they can, they can conceal their weapons easier, they can get through, they can get they get information easier. It's really interesting. Do you guys have as much fun making this thing overall as the viewers are going to have seeing it? Well, if that if that's the case, then this thing is going to be a sure hit because I, I it was one of the best experiences I've ever had yeah. at, at working ever. Uh, I, I loved it. It was the first time I've ever been on a set where I really felt like I was part of like a sport team. Uh, it was uh, it was very different from anything I'd ever done and. Uh, and just Joe creates an atmosphere. I mean, he plays music all the time, and he plays music during a scene. When, we, when, when, when Liam and I are coming down from into Baghdad after we had just um, gotten the plates, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'll never forget that. Yeah. A, they have the rain thing and the wind machine, and he's got like I think it was the theme music from Alien or something, it's and we're cranked up. Cranked no. up. So you, I was like, I'm in a movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I feel like I was. I get, in I a get movie. goosebumps. Yeah. 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 It was just incredible. Yeah. yeah. You're like, I feel like I'm in a movie. Wait, I am I in a movie. It was like that. It was a very surreal experience. Period. So is this a new avenue for you now? Then is, is more action films uh, uh, down I mean, the road? As a kid, I, I I always dreamt about doing stuff like that. So oh, I, I would I would love to, you know, oh, absolutely. In South Africa, you were a network executive in charge of hundreds of hours of programming each week, and yes. you're probably considered a quote overnight success here in America. Does that make you chuckle a little bit? Yeah, it is pretty funny. I mean, people that know me and have known me for years, you know, I, I worked extremely hard from when I got out of school to to try to be in this business. Um, I, I, I really was sort of a workaholic probably for like 14, 15 years of my life as in all sorts of different companies and different aspects of the, of the business. But funnily enough, people who know me even further back and you know, when I was a kid, from when I was about, literally from the early days of the 18, when I was about 10 to about 18, 19 years old, I used to make 
a lot of little videos and be in them and perform a lot. So in a weird way, I feel like I kind of lost who I was in that whole race to be like a big deal, you know. And and、um, now I just get to do what I love for a living and became an even bigger deal. <laughs> I know that you personally are notoriously private. You, you try to keep your personal life separate from your professional life as well. Obviously, you're in a relationship with someone who is an actor and a musician as well. Are there any plans at all for you and Justin to do a project together? You know, I try not to plan anything. I've learned in this business that you plan. Okay, I'm going to do this next, and then something else comes along, and you take a hard left, and y- y- you literally forget about that you had this whole scheme, and then and then either you're disappointed about it or your expectations are different about it. So for me in my career, I just I go with the flow. I look for good characters, I look for great stories, and I want to work with good directors. And whoever's in the cast is great. <laughs>